This freakish looking bug is the stuff of nightmares for many people. Welcome back to Bug of the Week. This is part 27 brought to you by Little Dude's Insect Academy. As always, if you are new here, consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, even maybe going down and clicking that link to donate to the Academy. Um, those donations make these videos possible. Um, we also have some fun events coming up that we need to be able to pay for. So, so if you feel inclined to donate, the link will be down below. Um, that would be really awesome. It really helps out the channel. But a free way to help us out is, again, subscribing or liking down below. That really helps us get this video out there. With all that out of the way, let's just get started. This massive insect is known as the Dobson fly. Existing within nine genera, these insects are highly recognizable and iconic for their unique characteristics. They originate in the southern states of the US, South America, and in Asia. Interestingly enough, the Dobson fly is not a fly at all, but has its own order, which is called Megaloptera. Some other members of Megaloptera are alder flies and fish flies, and they all are characterized by having their these long veined wings. Being a true insect and all, Dobson flies undergo a complete metamorphosis. So let's begin by exploring their fascinating larval form before we move on to their adult stage. The otherworldly looking larvae of these insects are called Helgramites, oftentimes measuring over an inch in length. It goes without saying that these larvae are absolutely huge. Another interesting fact about the Helgramite is that they live in freshwater streams exclusively, having both spiracles and gills. So they can live underwater, but they can also breathe air also. The Dobson fly are actually in their larval form for the vast majority of their lifespans, often living three years as larvae. These larvae often live under flat rocks and other crevices underwater, awaiting their next meal. Speaking of feeding, the Helgramite's food of choice is actually the toes of unsuspecting toddlers coming to play at the creek. I'm, I'm just kidding. They, they, they don't do that. I'm just joking. They mostly feed on soft-bodied aquatic larvae of insects, such as caddis fly and black fly larvae. Now, in order to catch this prey underwater, they use their strong, muscular, serrated mandibles. These larvae have three pairs of legs, which they use to traverse the floors of the creeks they inhabit. And although these little spines look like additional legs, they are actually terminal hooks, which they use to anchor themselves amongst the strong water currents that they live in. While in their larval form, they go through 10 to 12 things that we call instars or molts before, coming, be, before becoming an adult. So they molt 10 to 12 times before they're big enough to emerge as adults. Now, in the United States, a phenomenon known as Helgramite crawling occurs when hundreds of Hel Helgramites are observed vacating the waters in a large swarm. This is likely due to the vibrations from the local thunderstorms, which is quite interesting. Now, although the larval forms of these insects are absolutely fascinating, we should move on to the adult stage. After emerging, the adults of these insects have two pairs of long, papery, veined wings which they use to fly. Dobson flies can tend to measure up to three and a half inches in length. I remember when I said earlier that the larvae often live longer than the adults. Well, adult Dobson flies only live for about a week to a week and a half, and they don't eat anything for that period of time as they don't possess any proper feeding mouth parts. They're also equipped with a pair of very long antennae as they often fly during the nighttime, so that, that, that allows them to sense in the dark way better. Part of what makes Dobson flies really eye-catching and kind of terrifying to a lot of people is that the males specifically are um, equipped with these massive mandibles protruding from the fronts of their heads. And I know what you're probably thinking, well, Brayden, if these insects don't feed on anything in their adult form, then what are these mandibles for? And that is actually a great question, but Many male insects, such as stag beetles, use their large mandibles to fight off other males of that species, and that remains true for dobson flies. Male dobson flies often use their large mandibles to fight off other males, and they also use their mandibles to latch onto trees and rocks for stability. So although these insects can be quite frightening for many, they're actually really nothing to be afraid of. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Bug of the Week. If you enjoyed it, like I said earlier, a great way to support us is dropping a subscribe and a like down below. Um, that way you don't miss out on any, any um, coming Bug of the Week episodes in the coming weeks. I've got a bunch planned out. Super excited about all these new episodes coming out for you guys to enjoy. And with that, I will see you all next week. But until then, keep on bugging.